on page 20, um, George, you, you mentioned that there are some patterns of questioning that need to be broken to, to push the quality of our lives to a new level. So I guess I'm really interested to have a chat about what those patterns are mm. and how do they actually play out in real life? Yeah. I, I, let, me, let me backtrack to a story. And the story, I, I wrote about this story in one of these books and uh, I think it was 1984, 1984 or 85. There was an air crash uh, at a place called Mount Williams. And uh, I was called out. Um, I was a police officer at the time. Mm -hmm. I was called out to go and attend it, right? So it was part of the, back in that day, they had the, um, what are they called? Special Weapons Operations Squad. That's what it was originally called. And so I was, you know, a young entrant into this, all, uh, you know, vibrant and active and wanted to be a part of this, what was, you know, a pretty exciting little job. So they called us out to go and attend this aircraft crash. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went up in the plane with, um, Another guy who was kind of at the same level of experience as me, maybe he might be, you know, a year in the job, a year longer than me. The sergeant that uh, was on duty that day, the uh, police photographer, and the government medical officer, GMO. So we flew up, and it was really, really bad weather. So they flew us up in a military helicopter. So back in that day, it was an Iroquois, yeah. like the modern day Blackhawks. And they winched us in, and the winching, right, was they flew over this mountain winched us down in this really, really violent, windy weather, and it was about a 200-foot winch. I know that because they were very close to the end of the winch cable, which is 250 feet long. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, I remember the winch operator, you know, seeing a little yellow line come past, going, hmm, you know, this is not good. And I'm going, what are you talking about? He goes, we're in the last 50 feet of the winch. Yeah. So they winched us down, every single one of us, and we took some water, um, and some equipment for the doctor and the photographer. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, we had to take the camera gear and etc. So we, we get winched down. The role of the doctor is to confirm if everyone had died, and unfortunately everyone had. And the photographer's job was to take, you know, first photographs of the scene. And so you imagine this light aircraft, it's hit the top of the mountain, tumbled in there, and six people have died. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, you know, a really sad environment, mm -hmm. but in this terrible weather on, the, on this mountaintop. And no one had ever been there, it's really remote. And anyway, the, um, they call in, the, the Iroquois coming back, the, they're going to take everyone out because, you know, we've confirmed no one's uh, survived and we'll come back and we'll sort it out, you know, afterwards. So they, they winch the doctor out, mm -hmm. right? He goes first, gets winched up, and then the helicopter flies off. This is in the afternoon. It's really windy and violent weather and it's wet, you know, and we're in the jungle, um, yeah. you know, really thick, dense stuff. Helicopter flies off, and we all look at the sergeant and go, what's going on? And he goes, I ain't coming back till tomorrow. Oh, wow. Iroquois can't fly in, in the wind. And uh, we nearly had an, an incident during mm -hmm. the, the drop. The guy, one of the guys, you know, um, Alan, yeah, good mate of mine, he, he got dragged through the bush, oh, right, because wow. the helicopter got blown, you know, in big winds, and got dragged through the bush and hit trees and everything. Yeah. They almost jettisoned him, like cut the cable. But he, yeah, anyway, it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, wow, that's pretty yeah. an amazing experience. But, but it leads to the, uh, it's interesting because we get left there, it's, it, it got dark, we didn't have any gear. I had a muesli bar actually, mm -hmm. and a, had a bum bag, a muesli bar, and a litre of, litre of water in it. And I remember that, you know, it, it got really bad weather, it blew and it rained and it thundered down in the jungle. And we're on this mountaintop, it's on a slope, and you couldn't sit down because you sl slid Asleep, down in the mud. Yeah. And there's like zillions of leeches. Like seriously, yeah. yeah, there was just millions of these things. You know, little tentacles coming off leaves and things. So we're in the jungle and I remember I, I found a blanket in, you know, some strewn luggage. So all of us, we actually had enough blankets to, to just to put one over each. So it's like yeah. four grim reapers in the jungle in the dark. No lighting, no torches or anything just standing in there because you couldn't sit down you would wash down with the mud yeah and we just stood there all night and during the night i remember man i was so feeling so sorry for myself i felt like crap yeah like, oh, God, this sucks you know this is ridiculous which is a really normal reaction yeah, for most think of so. us yeah. absolutely but then i looked across and uh i could see the outline of the wreckage yeah. and my head immediately went to the six bodies there mm. and i'm thinking 
who's actually in the worst spot here? Is it them yeah. or is it me? Instant, an epiphany. It was a moment of realization that I'm, I'm seeing it from one angle, but not the other angle, yeah. if that makes sense. And suddenly, yeah, it, it stemmed from that. This is kind of where it began. So, you know, for me, the whole point around patterns of thinking and patterns of, you know, questioning mm -hmm. can, can completely change, you know, the way that you respond to a situation. So for me, in that moment, yeah. it was where the light came on. Yeah. The pattern that, and this is what leads into the patterns, the pattern that I had was a victim mentality. Yeah. And I think, you know, in, in the notes in the book, it, there, there, there's two patterns that I specifically focus on. Any pattern that disempowers you. Yep. Yeah which is where it stops you taking action. It's, it, mm -hmm. it causes you to feel bad about a situation. So you mentioned here questions like, why can't I do this? You're right. You know, what would I rather be doing? Right, we're contrasting in a completely wrong way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, a really negative way. But there's, is, I think there's reference in there too about any, any disempowering pattern is one that transfers accountability yeah, to so other people. Why don't they do something about this? Right. You know, when are they going to fix this? Yeah, so you blame, know? you're blaming others. Absolutely. Yeah, that disempowering patterns, they take mm -hmm. away your ability to do things, to take action. Yeah. I think the second one is, and this is the one that relates to the story of Mount Williams, and that is a victim mentality. Yeah. You know, why me? Why is this so bad? And I think there's some questions that referenced in there, the victim one. Yeah, so why does this always happen to me? Why am I so stressed? Why can't I be as lucky as he or she is? Yeah. You know, you know, and we see this a lot. Yeah, you, you hear it in general conversations with people. And we all do it. Mm. You know, I, I do it, but I catch myself. Yeah. I'm good at catching. The, the, the thing that people don't realise is these patterns of questioning, or, or you call it what you like, internal conversation. Mm. But if you have an answer in your head, you ask the question, you're just not aware of it. Yeah. The, the important thing is, if you, whatever question you ask, you're gonna get the answer. Why am I so unlucky? Well, you're gonna get mm. the answer yeah. because you're stupid, because you're not educated, because you, you'll get answers that will keep you there. Yeah, that's, that's the weird part about yeah. it. Yeah. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, patterns of disempowerment, you, you've got to break those. You, you want the ability to do something about it and do it in a way that's going to serve you. And the second yeah. one is stop being a victim with your questions. Yeah. Because we're all victims sometimes, but are we really? Yeah. And, and you actually um, have a quote just above the question I asked earlier, and that's, no one ever hurt their eyesight by looking at the bright side of life. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. Do you know? It's just yeah. so true. There's always something positive to be gained from any situation. Yeah. Some people are blessed in that their their habits and you know habitual ways of you know, conversing with themselves, which they do, mm -hmm. tend to be on you know the heart, the glass is half full, uh, half full. Mm -hmm. glass is half full. Yeah. And then other people have got embedded patterns of the glass is half empty. Yeah. It just is a pattern of thinking that got embedded somewhere in their past. Absolutely. Doesn't mean it needs to stay embedded. Though. No. It's a, it's a decision to change it. So if life sucks, you know, the first thing is just change these patterns first. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing you can do. Yeah. And it'll all flow on from there. Yep. Yeah.